Hello guys, hello gals, uh, this is Scooby here. Welcome to my channel. So, I like doing things once in a while where I kind of analyze survival videos, right? You know, because the only way to really be good in Dead by Daylight is to have a good survival te survivor team. You know, that, that's the best way to really play this game. You know, have, being a good player by yourself is great. You know, pissing off killers or running loops. But at the end of the day, your best chances is to have good survivor friends or teams. I like playing with randoms because, I don't know, I just feel like playing with friends on mics is kind of cheating in a way. I just, I kind of feel like playing with random people is more authentic, right? So, with that being said, I do once in a while run into great random survivor strangers. But then I run into people that make questionable choices like in this video oh so i didn't record the part of the video where i was looping um the death slinger i was looping him for about five minutes okay so that was a good start of the video a uh, good start of the match where i run the death slinger for five minutes he doesn't even hook me and my teammates managed to do two generators all right that's a good thing but then Everything starts to go downhill when I notice a few things that my survivor teammates are doing. Now, I'm going to try my best to not really uh, put the gaming name tags of people so they don't get shit on for anything like that because I'm not that type of guy. In fact, I'm going to... I'm going to skew... No, no, I'll just block them later. So, anyways, with that being said, so the match goes really well at the beginning. I'm, they managed to do two generators, and my Fang, who is on my team, manages to do a third generator after I point to her because I feel that the best way to do generators in this game is to not do it with another person, is to spread out. Like, legit, like spreading out as survivors is the best way to do generators because it puts more pressure on the killer if there, there's more than two survivors the, the killer could have discordance or if the killer finds you in general then he knows where two survivors are the best way to really beat a killer in dead by daylight oh i messed up here because i earlier in the match this death slinger kept faking going to the left and this time he actually went forward and he downed me and so he actually tricked me right but so this is the first hook I finally get on. Yay, good for him. Where's it most kind of So well, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, so the best way to really do this game is to spread out and do generators. Uh, instead of doing it with another person, yes, it's faster to do it with another person, but um, you run into problems, like I said, with the killer finding both of you. Now he knows where two survivors are. Um, the best way to really beat a killer dead by daylight, any killer, really any killer, this can work with any killer regardless of their power is to spread out. However, here is the big red flag right here. So I noticed throughout the whole match that yes, they did two generators at the beginning, this Bill and this, uh, I think it's Jake or whatever. Uh, or the David's David, whatever, whatever his name is, I forgot. Yeah, so they did two generators earlier, but then the rest of the match, all they really do is unhook people, heal, and run away. After that, I never really see them do generators again. And then, so the second mistake I'm going to point out soon is a thing runs past me in this direction. Now, in this direction, there actually is a hex totem. It's very clear that there's ruin in this match, so survivors should be looking for the hexes. Now, granted, this is probably what Bill and David, I think, I don't know why I can't remember his name, David are doing in this match but for some reason they don't find it but Fang clearly runs next to the hex totem so it's not really her fault I'm pointing it out and here again the bill is gonna heal me again so yeah so here is my issue with healing other teammates now I have a med kit granted healing is much faster right but the best way to really put pressure on the killer is that this bill should be doing a gin. I have a full med kit and I'm obviously healing myself. I ran past him. If I wanted him to heal me, I would have ran to him. But the problem with this, if I run away from him, he'll keep chasing me like other survivors do and force me to get healed by him. So he should really be focusing on a generator because it really doesn't take that long um, 
to heal myself with this med kit. Granted, if I had a certain med kit, I, I can understand why Bill would be healing me, but there are some instances like the purple med kit or uh, with speed add-ons. I, I have a lot of add-ons right here for a reason so I can heal myself, and I never really get to use it because Bill and Dave keep healing me throughout the whole match. And then I'm going to run into another issue after this. Once this, I think it's a, uh, David gets, yeah, here's the thing. She runs by the Hex Totem. The Hex Totem's clearly over there. That's what we need to look for. Granted, she could have been doing that the entire time. I don't know, so I'm not going to falter for that. And my big issue with other survivors is they always want to be next to you. Again, the best way to really put pressure on a killer is to spread out. See, look, look how easy I found this Hex. This Hex is in the open it's so obvious like where it is so I'm a little confused why my other fellow survivors couldn't find it so with oh, that being said after I cleanse this I'm able to go and see that the thing is about to be hooked now I have faith in this is the big mistake I actually make in this match I have faith in both Bill and David right that they're gonna go save this thing so what happens is they heal each other, and for some reason they stay on that side of the map where the two generators are already done. For some reason. Again, the best way to put pressure on a killer is to spread out. And for some reason, other survivors think it's a better idea to stick together. Now, I know for a fact the Bill is over there with Dave. I don't know why he doesn't immediately run to Fang and unhook her. Maybe he's trying to get the unhook for the, uh, the Dave. I, I don't know like and so he clearly sees that Dave is dying so maybe Bill is thinking oh maybe I'm gonna go save her no I know that one of our teammates just died I should really do this gym and I have faith that this Bill is gonna save Fang since he's healing people through the entire match but then I start to notice that she's almost at 50% uh, on staying on the hook so I have no choice but to save her uh, and in a minute I'm gonna see that Bill but yeah see I notice that Bill gets hit right here, so I run to the thing, and again, I don't know why Bill didn't save her earlier, because he's clearly over there where the Dave is, and they uh, he clearly died, he was, died on hook, so you would think since he's healing throughout the entire match, I have faith that Dave is gonna, uh, Bill is gonna go save Fang, but for some reason he doesn't. So. The problem with this is that the match goes really well at the beginning. I managed to loop this killer for five minutes, five oh, agonizing minutes and not get hit. Managed to outrun the killer. They managed to do two gins and after that everything goes south. Like once I notice that the, all the David and Bill are doing throughout the entire match is healing people. Again, I understand you want to heal other survivors because it's well, it's the better idea to do because it's faster. But if you see a survivor with a med kit, you probably should leave them alone and let them heal because they have a med kit for a reason. You should go be working on a gen. You would cause so much more pressure for the killer. If the Bill had been doing a gen earlier, and if the Fang had found the Ruin earlier, then this match would have been much smoother and we could have beat this Death Slinger. But again, like I said, um, some of the biggest uh, mistakes in this game is by other survivors. You can be the best survivor ever, loop the killer perfectly, but then uh, once I notice that we're only on the last hook and all my other teammates are on death hook and there's one teammate dead already, you kind of know the match is going downhill unless you find the hatch. So. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm going to be critiquing more survivor friends than I think what they should be doing. But, again, I want to reiterate that if you see another survivor with a med kit, you probably shouldn't heal them, regardless if it's faster. It's a much better idea to, to go work on a gym. Two, if the only thing you're doing throughout the entire match is healing other teammates, then you're not actually helping the team. Like, yeah, it's a good idea to heal your teammates. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. What I'm saying is that you should be more productive. And I noticed earlier that the Bill was also working on a dull totem instead of going and finding the Hex totem for some reason. And again, uh, the Bill made the mistake of not immediately running to the Fang once uh, David was going to the hook. 
because I noticed throughout the entire match all he was doing is killing, so it didn't really make that much sense to me, and Dave is pretty much, uh, Bill was pretty much dead on the hook anyway, so that's all I'm going to say for this match, guys. Uh, I'm not bashing the teammates on here, so really, I'm just saying what other survivors should be doing. So, I'll see you guys later. That's all I'm going to say. Enjoy.